May is Brain Tumor Awareness Month, and sadly, there are an estimated 700,000 Americans living with a brain tumor. Almost three years ago, I lost my dad to glioblastoma, an aggressive form of brain cancer. Unfortunately, my guest, Colin Gurner, also knows too well the pain of losing someone from brain cancer, as he lost his brother, GJ, to glioblastoma 20 months ago. Here is their story. The Gurner family is a super close family, a close bunch. Uh, we are everything to each other and, and always have been. I wanted to be like my brother. We shared the same friend groups. We shared the same interest. There's really, truly no one closer than the two Gurner bros. So on September 2nd, 2017, I got a call that my brother had a seizure while out to brunch with his friends in New York City. When I got the call, I ended up going to the hospital where he was undergoing tests and scans. There was something on his brain that shouldn't be there. And it was at that point when, you know, your hope for, oh, nothing's wrong. It was just kind of a, a weird incident was truly not the fact because he had a golf ball sized tumor on his brain. After he had his seizure, he went under emergency brain surgery to remove the tumor. Um, and within two weeks, we received the diagnosis of glioblastoma, known as GBM, which is the most difficult and dire and aggressive brain cancer that you can be diagnosed with. 95% of those diagnosed with this disease will not live to five years. Imagine being told that right before your 29th birthday with an entire life ahead of you. Knowing that this disease was going to one day take my brother, no matter what we did, is probably the most difficult, harrowing thing you can go through because so many other diseases and cancers even, you have an option, at least something of a glimmer of hope. In GBM, you don't. Sorry, sometimes it gets me. <laughs> I just wish he was still next to me, you know? <laughs> GBM's tough, but my brother was tougher and he decided to live life to the fullest every day. We went to Ireland, we hiked the Grand Canyon, we made sure to travel and, and make time for these opportunities because we knew that tomorrow wasn't guaranteed. He got to meet the UNC Tar Heels, his favorite college basketball team, the Mets and Jets, you know, we just went about living life and did things in the same way. He was out running 5Ks with sub eight minute miles and you were like, that's the kid with brain cancer? My brother fought a battle for 25 months that a lot of people knew about, but a lot of people didn't see the darkest parts of that battle. And because I have, and because we did it together, I think I will forever be changed in my outlook on life. Um, to know that tomorrow is truly a gift. My brother doesn't get any more tomorrows, but I'll make sure that every tomorrow is, is as best as I can in the same way that my brother did throughout his fight. Please welcome Colin Gurner. Colin, that's a really impactful video and I wanna thank you for coming on. I know it's hard, it's actually hard for me to watch it because even just seeing the Optune cap and all the things that happens to someone when they're diagnosed with glioblastoma, it's, it's a very, very specific kind of pain. It's been a little more than a year and a half since GJ passed away. How are you and your family doing right now? We're doing great. And, you know, watching that video is tough and it's also a blessing to see his face. And, you know, while I was looking forward to today and I'm glad that I'm saying we are doing great, you know, I wish he was sitting next to me uh, for this interview and, and watching those clips and, and that interview is the truest look into what we've been through and what so many families have been through that go through this. But today I'm healthy. Uh, today I'm happy. And, and that, that makes for a great day. Well, Colin, let's go back a little bit. You and I met almost three years ago through an incredible young lady named Lexi Caviston. Tell everyone about the first time we met and about Lexi, if you don't mind. For those of you that don't know, Lex was uh, on the show and she's one of those souls and smiles and energies that you just want to be around. And, and, you know, our moms became friends on a Facebook support group for GBM. And when she was invited to the show, she invited GJ and I and our, our parents to come uh, since we were New York City locals. And, you know, I vividly remember meeting you, Megan, on that day and hanging in the dressing room after the show. And you were just so candid and real about this disease and whatever you could do to help us as we were just starting out really at that point on our journey and what we were about to go through. And, you know, obviously 
you know, you're a public figure and, and talking through treatments and the reality of this disease and, and what we could do to change that was one of those days that I remember as being powerful and, and inspirational, knowing that so many people go through this, but together we can do something about it. Uh, GJ was, uh, I remember obviously meeting him, he was incredibly strong. I remember his humor and his kindness and he was just very cool. And he has inspired others battling brain cancer. And in his honor, you actually created Stash Strong. Can you tell us about it and where the idea came from? Yeah, Stash Strong is one of those things that started organically, right? My brother went into brain surgery knowing he wasn't going to back to work immediately. So he you know, grew his mustache out and donned it for surgery. And at the time, my dad and I joined in because there wasn't really anything else you could do together, right? I, I wasn't going through the treatments. I wasn't going under the knife for surgery. So people started to catch on. Obviously, these, these mustaches have, have quite a look. And um, you know, I coined his fight as being stash strong. And that's when we realized that we might have something that we could help others with. We raised over a million dollars for brain cancer research. We funded six clinical trials. We're focused on making sure that we're doing something tangible against the disease. But like you said, you met my brother, uh, a cool guy. So many people are like that. And the thing I think I'm proudest about what we've been able to do with Stash Strong is the brother, the sister, the mom, the dad, the parent, the sibling, you name it, that calls me and, and says, my loved one was just diagnosed with GBM. What do I do? I think it's the correct word is probably humbling when those individuals call because they have a lifeline. They have someone in a family they can connect to and talk through the diagnosis and talk through next steps and just feel that someone's there with them while they're going through this very difficult diagnosis. Well, Staff Strong is also doing something in honor of Brain Tumor Awareness Month, which is this month. Uh, can you explain the awesome mustache you have going on right now and uh, tell us about what it means uh, in regards to Staff Strong? Definitely. So we're currently running a campaign called Brew Staff Strong, and it's, it's simply a charity beer collaboration uh, where a portion of proceeds go to Staff Strong to fund brain cancer research. We have 205 breweries in 37 states participating and brewing close to 300,000 pints, which ultimately will make a profound impact, obviously, on Stash Strong's mission. I mean, we're going to raise over a quarter million dollars from this alone, which I always like to say, what does that mean, Colin? Where does that money go? That's five separate year-long grants or clinical trials that we can launch against glioblastoma, against brain cancer, against brain cancer. Um, which means not only are we going to be raising money to hopefully find a cure and extend lives, but probably even more importantly, raising awareness. Every time someone has this, you know, beer across the country, they're they're learning about GJ's story. They're learning about so many who unfortunately go through this diagnosis. You know, Colin, you're incredibly brave. I I still have a hard time doing advocacy work because I find myself sort of emotionally shutting down in a lot of ways because it brings me back to a lot of trauma. So you and your family are incredibly brave. And unfortunately, you and I are members of this same club and we're both still grieving. Um, how do you do this every day and how do you go on like this? And what advice would you give to others going through a loss like this or living with a family member who is fighting glioblastoma? Yeah, I mean, you hit the nail. It's it's tough. And I'll never be the same. <laughs> no matter what I do, he's not coming back. And I have my moments. <laughs> and as that video rolled in the beginning, I'm wiping my eyes quickly to get ready for this. And I'm sure you understand. And it comes out of nowhere and without warning. And that's what I've learned is it's okay to not be okay. Yes. I mean, I can see your emotion. It's it's just, it's really hard to describe. Uh, and I think it's, all cancer is horrible, but I think there's something specific about brain cancer because I always described it like it's in the never ending story when the little, like if you ever saw that movie, it's like the little marble drops and each day you lose a little bit more of the person in a slow way. And it's a specific kind of hell that I still have trouble. I went to a CVS uh, uh, around Christmas time. The Beach Boys started playing and I literally started crying in the aisle and had to leave because my Beach Boys are my dad's favorite band. So I agree it's okay to not be okay. I'm almost three years out of this and I still have moments that feel really, really crippling. Um, we are all at The View and at ABC so impressed by all of the money you're raising for brain cancer research and for all that you're doing for others who are going through this battle. So we reached out to one of GJ's biggest idols, former third baseman for the Mets, David Wright, and he has a special, special message for you. Please take a look. Hey, Colin. It's David Wright with New York Mets. 
Just wanted to drop you a quick note and congratulate Stash Strong on all the great work you're doing to flip the script on brain cancer. When I heard GJ's story and how he lived life to the fullest, I knew the team had to step up and help. So to honor GJ and all the great work you guys do at Stash Strong, the New York Mets would like to invite a family that's been affected by brain cancer and supported by you guys at Stash Strong out to a game. Keep up the terrific work and let's go Mets. Colin, the Mets organization also wants to invite you and your entire family in a game to honor GJ. So we just wanted to give that something small here for you and the incredible work. I know the fight is really hard. Um, I hope GJ would have been excited. He would have been. He would. That would have been special. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Well, Colin, I just want to thank you for talking to me today and for all the advocacy that you're doing. You're really just incredibly strong and resilient, as is your entire family. You're doing, quite frankly, what I couldn't dedicate my life to doing every single day. It just really wrecks me. Uh, talking to people, I have a very hard time still emotionally. I'm still in grief counseling. So your strength and your family's strength in honor of GJ's memory is really, really incredible and important. And I'm in awe of all of your strength. So thank you for joining me today. And for more information on GJ's story and Stash Strong, please visit the Views website. And thank you so much, Colin. Thank you, Megan. Thank you so much.